All right, let's see. What are we going to do today? Hello. Oh, oh, who are you? I am the ghost of paintings past. What do you mean paintings past? Like old paintings? Long past? Your past. More specifically, paintings long unfinished. Wait, are you wearing a bed sheet? Maybe. Pay attention. Okay, I finished my paintings. I finished them. <laughs> Ow! Did you just go slap me? What about this one? Oh yeah, forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. I'm here for your reclamation, Stevenizer. My name's not Stevenizer, it's Steve. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm giving you one last chance. And then what? You'll be doomed to walk the earth, begin paintings, and never, ever finish. Any. Ever. Oh, and I'll haunt you. A lot. Okay, okay. I'll do it. Please don't haunt me. Doing it right now. Today, Steve and Isa. Today. Well, Steve was better than his word. Finishing this painting became his very next episode. And he promised, he vowed even, to never let a painting, well, at least to try real hard to never let a painting go unfinished for such a long time. All right, well, here we go. We're going to finish this bad boy, and it's about time. You know, I have to tell you, one of the reasons this was put off is I originally had planned to make a workshop out of this on Skillshare. I'm currently not doing anything on workshops on Skillshare. I had a couple that I pulled down, and that's a long story. I won't go into it. Just, just uh, know that I don't have anything on Skillshare right now. I've had people ask. I know I'm going to make some Gumroad videos instead and there's reasons for that too so this kind of sat back burner for a while i've actually made three other videos about this and i will link to all of them below uh, one was a live broadcast uh, two others were on glazing techniques so that's why i'm going to sit here and just kind of chat with you about motivation <laughs> it kind of seems appropriate right i've known for a while that i needed to just go ahead and finish this and i kept putting it off and it's not because I don't like doing this kind of work. I actually really, really do. Uh, uh, once I get started on a realistic project like this, I love the zone, the zen, the zen zone that I can get into with it uh, because there's a lot of repetitive processes. But I love observing the reference and translating that and the realism. Um, I mean, I love expressive work, but I feel like the expressiveness here was coming up with my own composition that was very w designed. You know, I tried to design it well with the arrangement of the flowers and the leaves. So expression in photorealism takes on a different uh, aspect, I guess you might say. So there was no problem with motivation there. One of the problems that I have is just unique to me in my channel being a YouTuber, and that was uh, this is just a time-consuming type of painting. And I like to go through different kinds of content and things that I can do rather quickly for YouTube. So you have that aspect. And this always just kept getting back burner because when I worked on it or did it or finished it, I, I really wanted to be able to do it for viewers. So a lot of times I'm filtering it through that lens, you might say. Anyway, as we have established... It's time. It was time to finish it. I had requests uh, to finish it, and I was happy to do so. Well, let's chat just a minute about motivation. And I've been asked many times about how I motivate myself to do artwork when you don't really want to do artwork or, you know, you procrastinate. I think the first and most important thing I can say about that is you're not alone. However you feel about motivation, being motivated, you are not alone and your problem is not unique and there's nothing wrong with you there may be some particular things about you and how you deal with art or how you relate to art or creating art i don't know but um i can tell you as a professional that's been working as an artist for 35 years well longer if you count youtube but commercially uh it was 35 years uh anything that you can say you've experienced, I've probably experienced. So don't feel bad when you don't feel motivated. 
YouTube especially, if, if you follow a lot of your artists on YouTube or Instagram, it can really seem like some of these artists are so prolific. And some of them are. I don't want to lie to you. Some of them have boundless energy and just seem to be able to create something every day or every week. Uh, I can tell you that's not me. There's a documentary uh, done by PBS on Andrew Wyeth. I've watched it probably 50 times over the years. One of my favorite painters and what I always love is how prolific he was in addition to all the artistic things about him. He's just so incredibly prolific. And it's it's sometimes it, it can shame me. So if you felt that emotion, you're also not alone. It's really easy to look on artists that just seem to be able to crank stuff out and feel shamed. Um, especially in this digital uh, social media sharing world. Don't feel bad when you're not motivated. But it is worthwhile to think about how to crack through that barrier because I mean you don't want to go on forever just being motivated and never doing anything right let me just tell you what works for me I wish I could sit here and say oh I've got these great great tips for you uh, this will keep you from ever being unmotivated again uh, okay nobody has that I'm here to tell you nobody has that there are good ideas out there but nobody has that and uh, when I say that this is a universal problem uh, with artists or any type of creator it I mean that it affects different people differently and in different ways because everybody's situation is unique so to start off with uh, let's just say that is point number one know yourself know what motivates you why you're motivated or why you're not or at least analyze it you may not really understand but uh, think about it. Think about the times when you just feel like uh, you could paint forever. Why? Jot it down in a journal if you do that sort of thing. At the, at the very least, make a mental note. Try to get to know, you know, when you are in a prolific or productive mode, why you are. Uh, it can be so many things that makes it that way. I mean, there's so many factors that affect me. I'll start with a couple practical ones. And first is I like a clean and orderly workspace. If I come into a cluttered studio, I think, eh, I'll do it later. You know, if my materials are organized, if my workspace is clean, if everything is set up and I know where to reach for anything, I feel motivated to do something. You know, I see all my art supplies. I know where to lay my hands on my favorites. Uh, I've got this this great studio just waiting or workspace doesn't even have to be a whole studio you have a great workspace I've had studios in the corner of a bedroom so you know don't think in terms of oh he's so lucky he's got you know a full studio uh, I can tell you there have been many 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 years I did not um, I worked out of corners of bedrooms I worked out of uh, spare space but when that space was organized set up uh, where I could get to my supplies and I knew what I had, knew what I could use. Uh, it motivated me. The other thing is starting. Uh, it, it's the baby step formula. I even did a blog post about this where I used a clip from the movie What About Bob? Baby stepping. Um, you can spend five, ten minutes on any project taking baby steps, getting ready to go. If you want to set up an easel, get a piece of watercolor paper set up and ready to go. Do that, and maybe that's all you do. Maybe that's all you have time to do. Don't trip over minutes looking for hours. Um, because those minutes, sometimes you can just do a few things. Get your palette out. Get out your the brushes you're going to use. Uh, if you still need to do a drawing, uh, get started doing that drawing. Find your reference. Sort through your reference. Organize your reference. If you found reference, you want to print it out, print it out. If you want to put it in digitally into a folder so you can look at it on an iPad, do those. Do those little setup things so that when you have a larger block of time, you're set, ready to go. That works for me. It may not work for everybody, but it works for me. Just a couple other things that usually affect anybody. Uh, sleep. 
uh, being uh, well rested. If I'm not well rested, I usually am not motivated to work. And I realize that people who have sleep disorders, this could be an ongoing problem. It, it has been for me. Uh, I used a CPAP machine because I had a sleep apnea problem. And it caused chronic fatigue. Now, in my professional life, I was pretty much motivated by, motivated by my clients, my deadlines, and my income. <laughs> I'd, those things motivate me pretty well. Otherwise, I wouldn't have stuck with it for 35 years. Um, but when it comes to personal art, you know, doing art that means something to me, um, you know, I don't have those things. So you have to look for other things. Being well-rested is an important one. Also, wellness. Um, the better you feel if you're sick, I can't work very well when I'm sick. I don't, I don't work very well when I'm sick. So I have a real soft spot in my heart for people with, with chronic illnesses or chronic pain. It's, that's tough. It's really, really tough to be motivated. So I understand. And I just say those things to say, don't sweat it. I mean, if, if, those, if you're not motivated to paint, draw, and sketch because of those things, that's normal. That's normal. Um, and I really can't tell you how to be motivated, um, except maybe make your project simpler. If you just really have a lot of chronic issues and you want to be able to produce during those times, then find ways, find simpler ways to do it. The other things that work for me is I just love discovery. I love challenges. Those are a lot more motivating to me than... Uh, hanging a piece on a gallery wall or selling a piece that someone's going to hang in their home. Uh, that motivates some artists, and if that's you, that's great. Go out and find your clients. Go out and find people you can gift. Uh, I am more motivated by discovery and challenges. That's why I like working in sketchbooks so much. So I really love learning something or discovering something new and I love a challenge it's much like putting together a jigsaw puzzle or solving a sudoku puzzle or a crossword puzzle that's what art is to me so that's exciting and challenging and of course inspiration make sure you have the inspiration that means something to you don't take inspiration that means something to somebody else if it doesn't really mean something to you just because somebody said, oh, you ought to be motivated by this. Find the things that just really, really speak to you. Look at those. Look at those examples a lot. Uh, I keep a Pinterest page. I have a lot of inspirational books. Uh, my Pinterest, I don't really share much of my own art. I do some, but mostly I just pen things that I am very inspired by. So I can go back and look at them later. Anyway, just a few ideas. And... Um, Look, let's make this a community thing. In the comments, why don't everybody share uh, how you're motivated to do art, what motivates you. And uh, there are a lot of viewers that go through and read all these comments. You'll be helping others. And I'll be interested to see your comments too. And we'll just share. We'll, we'll share and talk about motivating ourselves to do more art. All right, thanks everybody. Hope that was a fun chat. Hope that was a fun video. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.